Okay, good morning everybody. Welcome to uh, our presentation. This is about layer 7 security to Kubernetes with OpenStack Courier. First, some legal mumbo jumbo. You all know this stuff, so let's go not there. <laughs> and then about the pr presenters. M my name is Ville Matla. I'm a product architect of the net uh, Forcepoint Network Security. It's Manish Dave uh, with Intel. Uh, my name is Jamal. Can you hear me? Does it work? Yeah. Okay. Uh, my name is Jamal Veza. I work as a software engineer in, in Midokura and I've been involved with the stack for, for a while with Neutron and lately in Courier, Courier Cornetis. And here is the rest of our team, the key contributors. I want to especially thank uh, Emmanuel and Lauri Vihevuori. Unfortunately, they could not participate in the event, but they did all the heavy lifting here. Also, there is some acknowledgement for Pino and Bin Pan here. That is not Bin's real picture. Okay, about agenda. First, we will give you uh, the problem statement, then solution overview and the design. Then we have a demo with video, next steps, call to action, and finally, questions and answers. The problem statement. Well, the microservices and containerized apps are rapidly gaining momentum. That is a good thing, containers are fine, but then security-wise, we have a still major concern and challenges to overcome. Especially, the one, one of the biggest reasons is that the, there isn't really a good way to do layer 7 security with the east-west traffic for containers or even with the virtual machines. And layer 7 security appliances uh, on, on the edge cannot uh, or do not have any visibility inside the cloud, cloud's east-west traffic. At the bottom, there are some, some surveys about the containers adaptation, and there was one keynote feature where there was a, they said that the, there's a three time more containers uh, used than, than virtual machines. So, micro segmentation for containers. What is the gap and what is needed? So basically, we are stating that the network policy does basic access control, and it is not sufficient in all cases. Access control lists are like boarding pass, and the layer 7 security is then the security check and the scanner when, when you are at the airport. And if you are clean, you can go inside. The container networking solutions like Flannel work well, but there is not multi-tenancy yet, so, so there, there are these kind of gaps here and there. The uh, layer 7 security to Kubernetes with open, OpenStack Courier will allow us to do the micro-segmentation, meaning very fine-grained fine, fine control between the container services uh, and have an advanced threat protection for virtual machines and con containers. Also, we can do automated policy security insertion and follow all the normal container workflows. I mean here that uh, bringing the, uh, this kind of security uh, appliance or container do not require you to do all, all, all kind of strange actions in, in your environment. It should be as trans transparent as possible for, for your networks, networks here. Next, John will talk about the solution components. So, what do we propose? Uh, we have created uh, Forcepoint, uh, Intel, and Midokura, a proof of concept that tries to solve these this, this problems that Bill has, uh, has already explained to you. So, this is basically based into, into platform. One is a container infrastructure orchestra uh, orchestrator. Uh, based on Kubernetes, and the other one is an L, uh, L7 security solution uh, orchestrated by Intel OSC and implemented by Forcepoint container. Uh, the container infrastructure, basically it's Kubernetes, uh, it works in Docker. I think Kubernetes is enforcing to, to use Rocket in the future, but right now we're using Docker, everyone knows Docker, so 
we are not going to talk about this. We are going to focus on the career project uh, my, in my site. What, what is the career project? Uh, what do we try to solve? I, I may some of you, if you are here, it means that you already know what's career and you have a, uh, already an idea about this. But career Kubernetes is the downstream project of middle Kura. We try to enforce to push it upstream, so maybe you haven't heard about it yet. And we, of course, we use Midonet as the, as the SDN solution. And after that, after explaining that, uh, they will cover in more detail the, the security solution. Basically, what's career? Uh, Bill has mentioned two problems that we try to focus here, we try to fix here. One of them is the, is, is the multi-tenancy. I mean, with Flannel, I don't know if you know how Flannel works, but basically you, you assign a, a big pool of, uh, of IPs, and from this subnet pool, you, you just split it in several ones, and you assign, uh, for instance, a, a slash 24 for each host. So uh, any, any container can, can be routed to the other one. So that can work, but we are open a stack. We, we want multi-tenancy for our customers or our private deployments. So Flano is not good at multi-tenancy. And the other problem is uh, we are in a process that some of us will want to move from virtual machines to containers. This cannot be a, a turn off, turn on solution. So you want to just move some services, try to work, try if it works, scale them, remove the virtual machine one and so on. So you want the virtual machines and the containers uh, running in the same network. And this is what Courier Trust tries to solve. And the solution and the proposal is kind of easy. So this is use Neutron as the SDN controller of the container orchestrators. Uh, so Courier is just a Neutron client. And don't think about this as a, as a single project. It's an umbrella of project that try to cover all the, all the container orchestrators. I think right now, upstream, there is only there is only, yeah, this is the status of the project here. There is only a uh, courier lib network deployed, uh, which takes care of, of Docker Swarm. And, but in the future, now we are going to introduce the courier Kubernetes, but in the future, maybe courier OpenShift, well, it's more or less like the Kubernetes one, and courier Mesos or whatever. So courier tries to cover all this container orchestration, whatever is your choose, and, and bring, bring them to, to open a stack. So the, currently the project is, the Courier Leap is already released. Uh, Courier Leap has basically the, the Neutron calls and the SDM binders. So think about Courier Leap kind of uh, Oslo libraries for Courier. So everything that can be shared across all the Courier projects can be part of the Courier Leap. Courier Network takes care of the Docker Swarm and Courier Kubernetes there is a downstream that I'm going to talk about now, but the, the idea is to move it upstream and so everyone can, can collaborate. And even if it's downstream, it's, it's open source. So you can, you can look at the code and try it if you want to. So how exactly works uh, Courier Kubernetes? Uh, you deploy a, a Ginx container, uh, like with Courier, uh, I, sorry, with Kubernetes, well, I assume that you already have been this everything configured, okay? So you call the Kubernetes API deploying a container. Then this, the, the API, what it does is to call uh, Kubelet in the worker machine to deploy that container. Uh, but meanwhile, our service, the Korea Kubernetes, the, the, the green ones are the ones that belongs to the, that belongs to the Kubernetes, Korea Kubernetes project. Blue ones are Kubernetes by itself. And the red one is the rest of OpenStack. Well, network API only. So, Courier Kubernetes is watching that even even in in, uh, in Kubernetes API, and once a new content, uh, new pod is created, it uh, it realizes it is created, and what it does is to call the network API and create a port. This port, so network API brings you back a, a, a JSON or whatever with with information of the of the port, which already has the the IP address of of, of that port. Okay, and also Kubernetes API allows you for any, any object that you have 
you can, there is a metadata attribute that you can write anything there. So what we do is to write the neutron port information in the Kubernetes pod object, okay? So meanwhile, Kubernetes has, uh, Kubelet has already created the container and tries to bind it. It calls the CNI driver. CNI is an interface for, for networking, like the, nib, the lib network interface for Docker, CNI is for Kubernetes. And the CNI driver calls the binder, and the binder reads the, the API, sees the port, knows which IP address has to have this port, knows the gateway, and can bind the container in the, in the network. If you, can, if you see there is several, behind the CNI driver, there are several binders. Good thing about Courier is almost 95% uh, SDN agnostic. You only need to have very small part of the code that does the binding to the, to the network to, to be compatible with Courier. And mostly uh, the same code that you have in Nova Compute for binding virtual machines, you, you, you move it to Courier lib and you, you will be compatible with the rest of the Courier, with the rest of the Courier uh, uh, projects. And this is basically how it works. And after that, this is only for pods, is the most complicated one, but this is the one what we are covering now. But in our approach, there is no security. There is, all the pods ca can see each other. So this is when our, our folks from Intel and Forcepoint come in and explain us the, the security part. Yeah, so let's come back to this uh, strong statement that access control list is not security. So why is that? For example, the, here is some examples. If you have a public services running in the cloud, they need to have a, a access from outside. So then everybody can, can contact your, your services and, uh, well, that's it. So, so you kind of hope that the, your, your nodes out to firewalls or security functions are working well. Then there are targeted attacks that jumps from network to network towards the victim. And finally, if they gain access nearby server of, of, of the interesting or critical service, the access list again cannot prevent, prevent the further, further co compromise. So a modern security solution must inspect also the layer four to layer seven payloads to catch the bad guy. Also, uh, sophisticated attacks use advanced evasion techniques to pass firewalls or another security functions. Here is an example. So here you can see the attacker who knows that the target is vulnerable and uh, it, it is protected by some firewall or security solution. So uh, the, the attacker will send the malware, for example, in sm very small TCP IP segments, and those segments are sent in the random order. So uh, this me basically means that the firewall cannot see that there's an attack, it allows it to pass through, and in the target side, the t TCP IP stack will uh, resegment the traffic and launch the mal malware. And now, the malware has finally got all access to all the critical components in that network. So it can do another hop there or, or then do the, the bad things. So, so that's, that's basically uh, the, the, how, how the mo modern, modern uh, attacks work. And uh, this same scheme works uh, with, with the virtual machines and uh, containers. So, so we should have a visibility in, in the, uh, here in the last, last hop of, of the uh, networks. So, so if we are inside this overlay network, we are better uh, because then we can protect uh, everything very, very effectively. The, the further in, in the, on a prim we are, the, 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 the more, more little we know, know about uh, w what is going on and more resources we will need. Okay, next to Manish. Okay, so, um, so just to bring it all together, so from the components we had, like the, the, the courier stuff and the networking Midokura, which um, Jami talked about, and the security part, which um, uh, will I talk about? So now I'm going to come about the third uh, part of the solution, which is the security controller. So this is a project which is um, 
you know, basically, um, we we have we have a demo at the at the Intel booth. If you want to stop by later today, um, but it's it, the the main purpose is to orchestrate security policies for networking and multiple virtual environments. So so what we see in the bottom, for example, this sort of uh, open security controller example is, you see a open stack environment on the bottom here. And then you see, um, you know, maybe um, this is what we are demoing at the booth. But then you also see the Kubernetes, which is what we are going to talk about right now, with the SDN. Then you can have another OpenStack environment, some other Manu, some other data center, uh, with other technology. So basically, it's very common to have your infrastructure in a different places. And for the security administrator, it becomes a problem because they have to now manage security across all of these devices, right? I mean, all of these different data centers. So where the security controller comes in is. You know, on the top, you see all these virtual security managers. So you have, like, for example, it could have an IPS manager. You could have, like, a, you know, next-gen firewall, like uh, the force point we are showing here. And then you have the physical appliance on the right, on the top, uh, you see there. Um, so they're already doing that in the data center, the physical appliances. They're managing the policies, you know, like uh, Willie explained, you know, to have, like, the advanced threat protection and, you know, anti-malware or whatever it is, right? Now, how do you do this with the virtual environment, with all these different data centers we have in the bottom? So this is where the security controller comes in. So it's really doing the orchestration and um, automation of all the security services. So think of it like there's a sort of security function catalog. So there's the force point next gen firewall. There could be other vendors, you know, IPS devices, and so on. And then it's taking that and then actually, um, you know, deploying this as a virtual sort of like uh, appliances across the distributed virtual appliances. The distributed virtual appliances is nothing but a logical entity on how you dis enable that across all these different data centers. So this is now sort of helping you know, create like, you know, a very powerful concept because the security administrator can now continue to use the same tools from a centralized you know, management perspective for all the policies, whether it's uh, across the containers, across OpenStack, or you know, all your physical and all that, right? And then for the managers, the security managers, this is another good point, because for them, they don't have to deal with the lower level details for how to work on each of these environments. So this demo here is showing, which I'm going to walk through after this, is going to show you how it will work with the Kubernetes. But then you, know, you also have the OpenStack and so on. So now the security function doesn't really need to worry about the lower level details of the actual infrastructure, how to integrate with that, with different SDN and different you know, uh, container or OpenStack uh, or other cloud technologies. So the security controller is going to abstract that and then make it possible. So let me go into the demo now. So the demo, first let me walk through like the high level topology. So this is uh, on the top you see uh, a simple, you know, like there, there is a there's a client, the evil client part, and then on the on you see the web server part. The web server is the vulnerable web server. Like Willa explained, you know, something that can be exploited. Um, now, if there was only ACL, which we will show before uh, before the insertion is happening, you will see that how the client can actually use a shell shock attack because the web server is vulnerable to that, right? And then what we'll show is. How we are going to, thanks to Courier and then the Open Security Controller with the containerized uh, force point appliance, uh, we're now actually going to insert dynamically um, the force point uh, you see in the center there. And then it's going to do the layer 7 inspection, and then you will stop the attack. So on the bottom, you see like the components. We have kind of talked about those uh, in isolation, three of us. But you see the uh, Open Security Controller. Of course, there's the Kubernetes itself. So the first step is, you know, we're going to deploy, and I'll walk through the, the demo, right? We're going to deploy the uh, actual security container, which is a force point security container. The next is we're going to go get thanks to, well, I should step back, actually. The zero step is, you know, because of the courier, that network binding has already happened, and all the information is available in Neutron. So then we will go and deploy the security uh, function. Then we will go ahead and in, get the information on what needs to be protected, which is really, in this case, the... The, the, the vulnerable web server part, right? And once we know that, then we will go ahead and do the service insertion, and that's where it will come in, where the force point appliance is now going to stop the attack. So that's how the demo is constructed. And uh, just, just real quick, so you know, we just deploy the appliance, uh, which is again container arrays, okay? Uh, so then we do like the actual insertion using the thanks to Midokura and uh, Midonet and Neutron uh, with the couriers. Courier uh, work that uh, Jomi explained, and then finally we drop uh, the layer seven attack. So this is another physical view of uh, the topology before I go into the actual demo. So you see again in the security control on the top, 
and then you have like the three nodes um, we, have, we will be work this demo on. You have the OpenStack controller itself, you have the Kubernetes, and then you have the worker. And the OpenStack, we're just using the, for this demo, we're just using the Neutron and, um, of course, Neutron and um, Keystone for authentication. Uh, but then we have the Midonet agent, of course. And then we have the uh, Kubernetes pieces. And then uh, what we are showing on the bottom here is the actual uh, Docker image for the force point, uh, which is a security appliance. And then the actual uh, next gen firewall security part. OK? So let me quickly walk through the demo now. So this is like a UI for the security controller. So before I start, uh, you can see um, on the, on the left side is all the configuration that we're going to walk through. So the first is, this is the security controller. Again, you know, there is an actual demo for this at the Intel booth for the OpenStack piece of it. This is the prototype we have done for the Kubernetes, just to be clear, right? So on this one, you see on the left, the virtualization connector. So on the virtualization connector is very defined in case of uh, OpenStack, you'll define, you know, where your, <coughs> what your OpenStack controller is, what your credentials are for Keystone and so on and so forth. So if you think of it that way, so you'll have the virtualization connector. The manager connectors are really where you are going to define the security managers. So in this case, will be the force point manager that we have to define all the credentials and information for. The third one is the service function, uh, the catalog. This is where, you know, if, if you remember in that uh, uh, high-level architecture I showed, you have different uh, virtual appliances. So this is where the catalog is for the appliances. Now, in OpenStack, we actually have the actual image, which, of course, uh, QCOWS2 or whatever it is. And then there will be other details about the, about the image itself, which is like the JSON file. But in this case, we're just using the JSON file because the image is already available through the Docker. So we're going to use that. And then finally, we'll show you how to do the distributed appliance, OK? So let me start the session here. So first, we're going to add uh, the, so I'm going to pause here. So first, we're going to add this. This is where the virtualization connector is. So this is where I'm going to, in, in, we are using SDN controller. So we're going to use the Midonet, of course. Then we have the Kubernetes, and then on the bottom you have the Keystone, and that's because of the Neutron. Remember, because the Neutron part is what we are using. So after that is done, so now that I have defined how to reach uh, Kubernetes and the infrastructure, next we're going to go and create the, the catalog. So this is where I'm going to import the image. Again, uh, if it was uh, the... Uh, in this case, we're just using the JSON file because it's got the information on how to, you know, authorize the image and download it from uh, the Docker. So once that is done, okay. So now you will see, uh, okay. Once that is done, you will see. Go back. Let's let's go and quickly check. So the image is there. So yeah, you can see the force point. This is the inspection image that uh, Villa has created. So once we do that, now we're going to go and create the appliance itself. So this is the definition of the appliance for the, for the Kubernetes environment, right? So we're going to call it container distributed. And then we're going to create like a spec for that tied to the data center we created. So once this is done, we're going to go back and check, you know, okay, so now that I've created this, I'm going to make sure that, you know, so here's the test NS, which is the, so there's nothing in there. This is the namespace where we are trying to deploy the security container. Okay, now I'm going to create like a deployment spec. Again, the sim similar workflow uh, exists for the OpenStack. This is what we have created for the Kubernetes, right? So now I'm going to create that, OK, I'm going to use this namespace, and this is where I'm going to actually deploy the security part. Now, this is very basic right now for Kubernetes. For the OpenStack, we have much more uh, you know, options on how you're going to deploy the security uh, part, or in that case, the VM, of course. OK, so now you can see that it is running. So now that it started running, let's go back. And then we're going to do the, the actual uh, security group. So this is sort of like, think of it as now you're creating like a, a infrastructure. OK, so let, let, let's first check the, OK, so this is the victim. This is the web server, which is vulnerable. 
So now I'm going to add. So the reason I went there is to check which uh, namespace. So I'm going to protect that namespace. So this think of this is like, again, this is the basic first uh, version we have. But think of this is where we are creating like a, OK, I'm going to protect this namespace okay, with the force point um, container. So now I've done that. I'm going to go back and let's just check that. So, OK, so this is, the, by the way, this is the attacker. This is the evil part which is going to attack the, the vulnerable web server. OK, and then I'm just going to show you the neutron. Thanks to the courier, we'll have the neutron. So let's highlight the three ports. One is the security container, other one is the attacker, and the other one is the victim. OK, and then this is the insertion. So basically, I'm seeing right now there is no insertion. So Midonet CLI is just telling you what, what, if there is any service insertion happened or not. Now I'm going to try and attack. And it is successful, because we have not done the insertion yet. Okay, So this is the attack, the shell shock attack, which was successful. We just try the regular curl to make sure that the server is working. Yep. So again, from the client to the server, attack successful. So now we're going to go ahead and go back to the security controller and do the bind. So bind is when the actual network redirection is going to happen. Again, you know, thanks to the neutron information we already have, we're just reusing all of that and then just doing the insertion. So now that we have done that, let's let it finish. OK, that's passed. You see there. OK, so now you're going to go back and see the insertion. And you can see that the insertion has happened. OK, and then we're going to try the curl, which should work. Yeah, This is the normal curl, right, uh, which, which should work, which is a normal traffic. But we're going to try the attack. And it's not successful. So let's just go back and log into the force point um, container and check the logs. So we're just going to find the ID. And then do a Docker exec, and then uh, see the logs. So basically, the traffic was stopped by the inspection engine, the layer layer seven inspection engine. And there you go. So just to summarize it, right? So again, it, you know, few, few things. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to summarize it, the few things, okay. So one is uh, the security controller um, you know, making use of multiple type of environment. We already have OpenStack you know, we're demonstrating downstairs. But um, this is the first time we're trying something with the, uh, with the um, um, Kubernetes uh, or the container environment. And thanks to the work, uh, courier work, you know, we're kind of leveraging already what we have done with the Neutron. So there was no, not much of an effort needed because there was already all this information is available through the Neutron. So that's number one. Number two is, of course, you know, the, the security container, the part that uh, Ville mentioned, right, where, you know, security container itself, like how it's protecting for the L7 attack. Like in this case, the shell shock could have gone through, you know, if you have a normal uh, Kubernetes environment with no <coughs> layer 7 security. Again, the physical appliances which are there at the border of your, uh, you know, north-south, what we call it, you know, at your uh, data center, they're not going to help in this case, right, because both the pods were right there. So this is the kind of the key point here, right? So is being able to orchestrate like this type of you know layer seven security in the in a Kubernetes environment. So I think at this point I'm gonna hand it off to uh, Jomi. He's gonna walk through some of the next steps and call to action. Yeah. Well, basically this this is what we have, and as I said before, uh, the part of Midokura is a proof of concept that we have downstream is open source, but it's downstream. So if you are a developer, you are interested on contributing courier, you have the, you have the reference here to uh, the weekly meeting, the list to ask anything or to, start to try to collaborate. So I, I would like you, I, I would like more help on that. So, and also, the, in terms of uh, native, native uh, Security in Kubernetes, there is a, a network policy already, science, Kubernetes 1.3. Uh, 
uh, that we haven't used it in this case, and we would like, it would be great if we tried to push the labels that we use for L7 as a standard Kubernetes uh, network, policy, uh, network policy labels. That would be great as well. If you want information about Forcepoint, just contact, and this is the roadmap for Open Secure Controller, some, some of the points of the roadmap. And also here, more links and reference if you are interested in it. Uh, mostly about upstream middle net and middle net service chaining. If you are interested in it, it was previous talks in previous summits. You can check it here. And basically, that's, that's all. So, any questions? I think we have like 10 minutes, so if you have questions. 10 minutes, yeah. Please. Uh, probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I put the, the most, I mean, the, not the roadmap of, of, uh, of Courier Kubernetes on here. So if you want, if you want to see the roadmap upstream, there is, there is but a... It's, but it's an thing, but in, in Kubernetes, you have to read the network tags in the port, right? Ah, okay, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, probably, right? I mean, yeah, where did yeah. you get the information of? Yeah. yeah, once we get the tag information, then we can take the action based on that. Is it? Yeah. It's just, it's just open available on ports right now. It's just that all So. So that, that's your part because I don't know from where you read the information from you to get the Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So basically, once we read the label, we can take the action. See, right now we were looking at the neutron, right? So what we want to do, if possible, like, I mean, this is of course one of the projects, right? That we. So for us, it's like, okay, I want to have like a solution which works like I was showing, you know, for the different environments, right? So courier with Neutron is one environment, right? Now, if you want to go natively, right? Then if there is a way for me to read where I want to do that sort of thing, right? And then ability for me to do the rest of the insertion, right? So those are the two things I need from the network, right? One is I need to know Okay, the information of what to redirect, and the second is I need to have an API to do the redirect, right? So right now, we're exploring some of those things with the Kubernetes, and the, we saw that some of the labels, the L7 policy label and tags and those things, is where we could sort of take the next steps. And honestly, we have not done uh, deep work there, right? But just want to see if what we can explore over there. The reason we started working with Courier, which was kind of like, it was really easy because for us, it's like all the information already there in Neutron, and because of the work we have been doing with the Neutron so far, you know, we can just do the service chaining insertion and all that, right? So hopefully that makes sense, right? I understand that it yeah. should be possible, yeah. Yeah. Uh, like uh, two branches of the project for OpenStack and Kubernetes. Uh, yeah. Uh, are they available uh, in upstream right now or only OpenStack version of the security controller? So the controller itself is the same. The security controller is the same. It's just like a. Yeah. What's that? Could you repeat the question? Well, like, we can't hear the repeat question. the question to the. Uh, repeat if the, the open question. security controller is open source. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you're asking about availability, right? Yeah, yeah, so basic. Yeah, so the, the controller is going to be the same. The open security controller is the same, right? And it's just uh, works with multiple environments. So I, I think the question is can you get it to. to so it's, it's the same project? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. So, so it's a it's a standalone project right now. 
right? It's under uh, Intel. We're trying to get it to the next level where we're going to have it uh, open source over the next few months. So uh, you'll see some announcements uh, about that. But so, so to answer your question, if you if this is more like a work in progress right now, and it's the uh, the idea is to open source it, but it's not available through Kubernetes. It's a standalone project. Is that answer? Okay. The, the part that reads from Kubernetes and writes that the career part, it's open source. I mean, it's downstream. It's in the middle career repository, but it's open source, and we try to push it to open source. Yeah, that that part they will have to do it. So, so the career the, part is definitely, but the security control is a standalone. Uh, the VNFs have to have like some kind of a plugin. It's a, uh, but they will. Yeah. Yeah, Force Point. They have a plugin, for example. So, so if uh, like like uh, the demonstration that we have downstairs is the uh, Palo Alto Networks, um, and then Intel Security, which is McAfee, IPS. So, so each of these guys have plugins. So once they have plugins, then of course the downstairs the demo is where the VMs are there. You know, the, there's a Palo Alto VM, IPS VM, and all that. This one is the container one. So this is a little bit like first, you know, rev zero of the Kubernetes part of it. But uh, for the VM, we, but the, the plugin will be the same. So it will be a plugin that uh, each of these VNF will have. And you will offer uh, uh, some instruction chaining yeah. later? Yeah. Yeah, so today we are working through uh, um, the Middle career. <laughs> uh, we're going to be working through... Um, you know, Midokura, we're going to be working through Plum Grid, which is the demo downstairs, right? And then we are working with, let's say, Nuaj and others, right? And then we're also working with the, you have a nat native uh, networking SFC Neutron project. So we start working with that. It's, all, it's not done yet, so we're working on it. But So basically the idea is to have, you know, like all these different network combinations that you have and be able to do the security across that, right? So for us, they are just plugins. So Midokura is a plugin, Plum Grid is a plugin. And then this courier part, and so on and so forth. So it's just having like a one place where you can have a connection to all these different network, networking solutions. Few more minutes, any questions? Two, three minutes left. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a, we have extracted our IPS user space engine and put that into the, the Docker pod. So, so it's basically one user space application which can start very rapidly. In five seconds, it is up and running. So that is the great thing about this kind of container security. You can easily scale it up and have, for example, in a hot patching situation, there was the hard fleet attack, everybody knows that one. So you, you can have a, a lots of lots of uh, servers having a, a broken open SSL implementation, and you can put the, this kind of container uh, in between them and protect this uh, this kind of heartbleed or libc DNS attacks easily. And then can, you can, uh, in your own time, bring down and up your n n new workloads. For example, if you have some server that has a critical uh, critical application that cannot be live migrated easily, then it is really nice, a nice way to protect, protect the environment in, in, in this case with this But kind. I think he was asking for the size of the image. Uh, the, the size of image, we have our fingerprint package, but it's under, under I, I think, under, uh, under one gigabit or something like that. So you, could, you have your own 16-inch uh, uh, database? Yes, yes. Uh, we are thinking about it. Uh, what, what is the best method? Uh, have, uh, uh, let, let's say that uh, if you need to scale up the, the, this uh, container to, let's say, 1,000 hosts, uh, doing the dynamic update takes, uh, takes time. So, so maybe the better situation is that uh, we give you a new up image which can be rapidly deployed. So, so, so. We, we are not yet decided which is the best way. Maybe a kind of hybrid would be. So, so that's where actually the security controller will also play a role because swapping out, you know, as we scale up or down or just replacing with an updated appliance. And then in the meantime, we're all, because we're aware of the insertion that we have done. 
so we can start the new one, change the insertion, and things like that, right? So that's, of course, we have not done the work yet, but you know, that's where the security controller can do. And something like that exists for a little bit for the VM part we have done for OpenStack. So the container will be much uh, similar, but it will be different, of course. Yeah, so. yeah we are very in interested to hear about your thoughts. So, so please contact that uh, email address and we, we, we can have a long discussion. This is yeah. very interesting topic to us, the, having good protection in, in, inside the clouds. Yeah, well, uh, 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 there was a really great talk yesterday about the holistic approach to the OpenStack, and uh, 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 you should follow all the best practices there, but uh, uh, eventually there, there will be breach in some way or another. So, so, so the great thing about this open security controller is that you can have uh, multiple solutions there, there. and uh, if, if we get the service chaining work well in the future, you, you, have, you can have a double skin or whatever kind of re really strong security. So, so, so. In my opinion, of course, it, it, it is really good practice to have a security solution there av av available. You don't need to use it to protect everything, but if you have a critical workload in, in, in clouds, then it is really wise to protect it, at least those, those ones. Yeah, I mean, like security is always, I mean, not just one thing, right? You'll have to, yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks Thank for coming. Thank you.